Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome back to the Classic of Tea, Chapter Five, Sunday Tea Book Episode, uh, Season Two. Because <laughs> we forgot it. Episode so, Ten. Yes. All right, guys. Let us know what is in your cup. We are excited for the second round of Chapter Five. We talked a little bit about it last week. You can check out the website link down below in the description mm, to ca catch up with that. Let us know what you're brewing. We're brewing. Da -da -da -da. By Shoumei, a white tea. By Shoumei, by Shoumei on our website at genti.ca. But it's not called by Shoumei, it's just so called Shoumei. Okay, it's a white tea. So, uh, yeah, I almost said the bamboo that. Can we switch the. Yes, yes, let's show them the tea. Instagram, well, you're not going to get a great can look only at have it. A look over you get here. a little look, but you should go over to YouTube, Instagram, right? so you can see what's going mm. on. Um, we'll show the guys on the close-up camera on the YouTube side the gorgeous yep. leaf that we'll be brewing. Yep, and, this is a break up um, from the cake. As so I mentioned in the breathing. little intro, sorry about that. Okay. Did I interrupt you? No. <laughs> we have a moment of freeze, so we don't know what's going Super on. Super excited to get on with today's episode, but uh, at any rate, I wanted to just mention that we have the Classic of Tea Sip Along Six Pack. I just love that name. It is a bundle of teas that we've put together that cover the teas that we're having right now today. Shomei is in the pack. It has one tea from each of, the, each of the six Chinese tea categories, 25 grams of each. If you add up all the prices individually, you're going to save 25% if you grab that pack. That's linked down below on our website. Um, today, Shomei, this is a really lovely tea. Um, well, we'll talk about the tasting notes when we taste it. I read the description and I'm going by memory, but I'm looking forward to tasting it. So let's dive into a little bit of the intro. What is Sunday Tea Book? What are we doing here? Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a book, paper, or an article that is full, full, full of valuable, interesting, and pertinent information about Chinese tea or its culture. And, we, I, I, and it's either not available in the West because it's not translated into English, or if it's translated, maybe the translation has a few bumps and twists and turns that could use some discussion. Um, so we take them and we, we review that with you here live. And, um, and that's what it is. We also post it on the website. The link is down below. So you can go there to the finished translation. So you may be wondering, why didn't you just post it, call it a blog post, and then go on with your Sunday, you know? Maybe have a barbecue or something instead of do a live. Well, first, we love it here. We don't want to be doing a barbecue. We want to be here with you. And um, not only do we, we love, love it, it, but you guys are really important for this process. So why did we do it is because over the years working with Jen, I had a million questions and I realized the stepping through those questions and working through the answers with her and together is far more enriching than if she just predicted my questions and wrote them all out. Mm. And having you guys here, you can help us. And you us. never know what angle a person will read a sentence or a That's statement. Right. That's right. Which really enriches the whole learning yep. process. So the, yes, so basically that's why we do it live because it's super enriching. It's super fun. We brew tea with you guys. You guys tell us what you're brewing. Tell us what you're brewing. And uh, you let us know the tasting notes. We share thoughts about some of the complex topics and stuff that we get into. And that is what Sunday Tea Book is all about. That is what it has been about for both seasons. For This is the third book we've mm. done. We've done Jian, uh, Jian Li Wu's uh, China Tea was the first one we did. It's a great resource if you're just getting into Chinese tea. Rewatch the whole thing. It's uh, You'll get a, 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 an over, not an overview, you will basically read the whole book through our YouTube videos and it is a great great starting point it is a great point if you're well familiar with chinese tea it's got lots of great information then we did chen chuan's tea classification in theory and practice a fascinating historical text about where our six tea categories actually come from and now we're doing an <laughs> even more historic text we're going back in time we're going back in time now we're <laughs> 1200 years back in time to the tang dynasty lu yu's classic of tea and uh mm. woo, it's awesome Yes, yes. Hello, Bodik and uh, Greg si Cyrus. Greg Cyrus. Greg Cyrus. Cyrus? Yeah. Hey, okay. Greg Cyrus. And Joseph Burton, welcome back. So great to have you back. 
Yeah, and、uh, Bodig is having some shuixian. Oh, that's cool. And Joseph's going to put on his. I'm going to try and say it. Tokonomic yusu today. <laughs> Very bro. Okay, just a quick.、Uh, mm. It's so good, right? I smell it. I try not to interrupt you because I was like, "Oh my god, that smells so good, so creamy." Creamy. That soy nuttiness is still、yes. there, but it's got、yes. a little hint of chocolateiness almost. It's really interesting, like a cocoa-y. Co- and very confident. Ooh, this nose is interesting. Yeah, the nose, the high nose on the lid is really um. It's got some. No, it's different. The temperature, different temperature. You、mm, know, stinky flower now. It was、yeah. more sweet flower initially. Those are、uh, uh, uh, pollen. Smell,、mm. you know, but、oh, it's really.、Boy. Alrighty, oh, that's, that's very... always so mellowing, right?、Uh, how do you call that in、uh, in yoga? Centering. 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 Nice. Centering. Anyway, just want to introduce the book、uh, mm. that we use as the base of trans. Translation and stuff is called、uh, Cha Jin Shu Ping. It's by Mr.、Uh, Wu Jun Nong. It's a fan, fan, fantastic book. Okay,、mm. if you like Chinese tea, would like to read more, and possibly you can read Chinese. This is such a, such a great book with a、uh, lots of good information. The and, de facto translation of classic of tea. Yeah. Sort of the, the industry authentic, standard.、Mm. Yeah. Yeah. With a well studied, well peer reviewed, and、uh, it's just、um, it's really. Really enrich experience to just read it and learn so much about it. And today's episode, we're not started yet, but just to let you know, we will devote this whole episode to water, and uh, uh, water boiling. It's very, I think, it's very interesting. We had a, a individual、uh, video that we did on、uh, water.、Mm-hmm. We also have a more,、um, how should I say, more accessible.、Uh, Water episode from Sunday Tea Book talk about the water by accessible.、Mm. I mean, it's pretty.、Um, when you just get into entry the level, fun, entry level,、right. yeah, get into the fun with the tea and water. I think that's great. Today we dive a little bit. We're getting nerdy into the nerdy side a little bit of a、uh, uh, science, uh, chemicals and uh, uh, mini physics and stuff. And I would need your help. Yes. I mean, because I didn't learn chemistry. In English, so what I'm trying to say is, when I got here, I actually don't know how to say H2O in the chemical term. I know the formula, but I don't know how you would say it other than water. Tricky <laughs> example because we don't actually use the chemical name for H2O typically. Oh, I'm just uh, doing a、uh, CO2. For example,、too. right? But that's just an example. So I look those、yeah. online, and if some of my、uh, Uh, what I said, the chemical or whatever doesn't make sense or is actually wrong.、Uh, just correct me by commenting or stuff because I look up the word with the formula online. Yes. So, so strap on your lab coats <laughs> for that. Hey, everybody on the、uh, Instagram side, I see Miss YTC and Damar Damarlava Damar Damarlava. Hello, but you need to run over to YouTube because we're going to say goodbye soon. We're going to jump into tea trivia time. That's a time when we do a little bit of some fun trivia to warm up and just goof around and have a bit of fun before we dive into、uh, the classic of tea. And oh, before I say goodbye to Instagram and before we move on to tea trivia time, we you may have seen a new video on our YouTube. Oh right, right, right. Ask Jen Lee. New series has just launched. The、uh, sort of、uh, premiere episode was yesterday. Uh, yes. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's not linked down below. Shame on me. But I will link it down below、uh, coming up. So check、yeah. that out. So the gist was we inspired by a live session with my mom, and I felt like many people would love to have a live session with her.、Uh, however, during the live session, it was a pretty bad、uh, internet connection. You know, with the time difference and uh, uh, video chat, the just software just the sheer distance, right? Yeah,、mm. I think it took a toll on the smoothness of the live. So、uh, this is kind of the、uh, the next best thing. Yeah, we could do to do that. So. 
if you were ever gonna meet up with my mom, um, what do you want to ask her, or uh, what do you want to hear her talk about? Feel free to comment, and uh, I'll just send a question to her, and she's gonna yep. answer. And this kind of, uh, and um, we keep it her original voice because I feel like it's more authentic. You can hear actually my mom talking. Yeah, and Chinese. if you happen to understand uh, Mandarin, mm. then you know, then you can so just get the subtitle answers. Subtitle is underneath. Yep. You have to turn that on. Yep, turn on the subtitles. So super excited about that series. On that note, we are now going to head over. No, first we're going to say bye bye to Instagram. So head on over to YouTube for Tea Trivia Time. All right, that's good. That was my so much uh, singing for that high quality singing right there. Phone goes to you, and you and I now, YouTube folks, all the uh, cool kids in the club. Now that we got rid of those Instagram people. Just kidding, Instagram. We are going to get on with the show and slide into Tea Trivia Time! Oh. Yeah. All right, folks, welcome to Tea Trivia Time. Let me make the screen title screen go away. Yes, there we go. Hello. Welcome to Tea Trivia Time. Tea Trivia Time is where we just have a bunch of fun. I ask you guys a few goofy questions to warm up to the episode. Sometimes they're related to the episode. Sometimes they're related to the tea we're drinking. Sometimes they're completely, completely and wildly random. Everybody's okay here. Nothing, nothing heavy dropped on anybody. So let's get started. What are the three types of white tea? Is it one? Shomei, Bai Mudan, and Bai Hao Yun Jen. Is it two, low, medium, and high white tea? Is it three, Bai Hao Yun Jen, Bai A Tsilan, and Yue Guan Bai? Or is it four, Bai Hao Yun Jen, top grade, Bai Hao Yun Jen, regular, and Bai Mudan? Just press the number on your keyboard and hit enter is the best way to get things through. We have a brand new internet connection, so we're hoping that more of your answers will get recorded and the latency or whatever causes the lag, whatever we call that thing, will be less and everything will be smoother. So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Answers are rolling in. Oh, and if you don't know the answer, take a wild guess. I almost said a bad word. Just take a <laughs> wild guess. Um, no need for swears here. This is a family-friendly show. I see lots of guesses rolling in though. Keep them up. A couple guesses for one. Boudique threw down an answer for four. All great guesses. Take a wild one if you don't know. Just get your name on the scoreboard. Mm. I spilled tea on myself. And Joseph and uh, Joseph and Kelu got the right answer. It is Shomei by Mudan and by Hao Yun Jen, generally regarded as the three uh, types or grades, sometimes considered grades of white tea, of course, massive overlap. We won't get into all the details, but you can check out some of our other videos about that where we do talk about white tea in depth and how it's graded, etc., etc. Um, those of you that may be picky may notice that I skipped Gong Mei. It's really just a subclass of Show Me in my book, but it's okay if you think it's a class, but I just was going for the three. All right, next up, <laughs> what's the maximum number of bowls of Tang Dynasty tea that would typically be served? Is it two bowls of tea? Is it one bowl of tea? Is it five bowls of tea? Or is it four, as close to 12 as possible? How many bowls of Tang Dynasty tea would typically be served in a setting? Which is usually about a liter, I think. On that note, you can head on to the link down below, which will take you to today's chapter so that you can have the text there in front of you. Heck, I think if you're on the page, you could watch the live on the page while you look at the page. I think that would work. I don't know. I can never do it because I'm always here doing the live. But, you know, let me know if you're doing that. If that works, that would be cool if I could know. All right, last few seconds to get your answers in for what's the maximum number of bowls of Tang Dynasty tea that would typically be served in a setting? Is it two, one, five, or as close to 12 as possible? And Bodique got it right with five. Uh, I see that Joseph and, and uh, Kelu guessed two, which is a good guess, but um, indeed the first couple are the best. And if you check the notes, the uh, link down below the translation, the first bowl is like the premium bowl for some reason. Maybe we'll get into that. Probably not. Mostly on water today. But anyway, way to go guys. Good work on your guesses, on your answers. We'll be moving on to the next question shortly. All right. What is the desired taste for perfectly prepared Tang Dynasty tea. I took a little bit of editorial 
liberty here. Nowhere in the text does Liu state that this is the quote unquote perfect preparation flavor, but he intimates it quite heavily. So feel free to look for the answer in the text. Is it one, watery and light? Is it two, pure, sweet? Is it three, bitter, then tart? Or is it four, <laughs> bitter and then sweet? What is the desired taste for perfectly prepared Tang Dynasty tea? Watery and light, pure sweet, bitter than tart, or bitter than sweet? Hit the number, hit enter, make a guess, make an answer, get on the board, see if you can win the prize. There is no prize. <laughs> Tea trivia time is all about having fun and warming up just to lighten it up. We love to be nerdy about tea. We love to share information with you, but we also love, or at least I love, she's a genius. I love not taking myself too seriously. And bitter than sweet, way to go Greg and Tobias. Excellent work and way to jump in in the middle of the game. If you just arrived, do not hesitate. You can jump in. There are no rules here. Good guess at bitter than tart, Bodique, and good guess at pure sweet, Joseph. Now we know how you guys like your tea. <laughs> no, just kidding, maybe. All right, this is awesome. Wrapping up tea trivia time shortly here. It looks like uh, it's going to be a close one. We've got lots of folks, uh, lots of folks in the mix, lots of different answers. Here we are rolling on with a good water temperature for infusing high quality white tea is? This is one of my favorite questions. I'm so glad I put this in. A good water temperature for infusing high quality, okay, white tea is? Is it one, boiling? Is it two, 95 degrees Celsius, 203 F? Is it three, 75 to 85 degrees C, 165 to 185 F? Or is it four, 75 degrees Celsius, which is 165 F? All right, I love this question. I, uh, I looked it up again on the internet to see if the internet would lie to me, and it did. The internet gave me bad information. Ooh. Anyway, I don't wanna give away the answer, oh my goodness. What is a good, a good water temperature for boiling tea? I see guesses for, I think three has rolled in, I think one has rolled in. I think these are good. This is a, just gonna be a tricky one. If you're using the internet, I'll give you a hint about that. All right. I'll try not to rant too, I'll try not to rant. Do not rant, avoid ranting. All right, way to go. Joseph and uh, Kelu got the correct answer, which is boiling, and many of you are probably going like this. Oh, boiling, but white tea is so delicate. Sure, it's delicate, sure, it's tricky to make, it's a delicate process, it's a delicate pro uh, whatever, but once it's made right, you really need it. I'm not gonna give away too much because you're gonna talk about this in today's topic about boiling water and why we boil water. Good guesses though, everybody, because the internet's all over the map on this one about how the more expensive a white tea is, the more you have to be delicate with it. Anyway, uh, I think you can get the idea that I think that's false. All right. The three types of Tang Dynasty tea foam are E, R, Sun. That's answer number one. <laughs> is it two? Pingguo, Li Zi, Tao Zi. Or is it three? Mu, Bu, Ho. Or is it four? Mo, Bo, and Hua. <laughs> this one might be tricky unless you were here last week and you have a fantastic memory. Or you're, on the, or you're on the page scrolling like mad, searching for those uh, particular words. So this is a really particular to classic of tea. One cool thing about Tang Dynasty tea is they have a part of the ritual, part of the ceremony, part of the preparation mechanism for making the tea generates foam. Um, so you might be thinking matcha and whatnot now, but uh, like we said last week, this is a particulate uh, like fairly particulate. Okay, the right answer is in. And way to go, Joseph and Kelu. It's Mo, Bo, and Hua. And uh, way to take a good guess, Bodique, at Pingua, Lizu, and Taozi. Those are those mean apple, peach, and uh, uh, apple, pear, and peach, respectively. If you want to practice your Chinese a little bit, there you go. It took me a while to figure all that out. But yes, way to go. Uh, the computer is now going to calculate all your answers. What was I talking about prior to that? Something to do with... Oh, the foam preparation is sort of magical. The more we read about it last week, the more I wish I could be there and see an, a, like a real Tang Dynasty preparation of tea. All right, Joseph Burton on the leaderboard with three correct answers, tied with Kelu 
and Bodique, you're on there with one. Greg and um, Tobias, you're both on the board also with one. You're all winners in my book. Greg Thank you for participating. Greg has a few answers not logged. And I think, I was yeah. going to say, often we get answers that aren't logged. Yes. It might depend on your geography or maybe my weirdo internet connection. Either way, this has been awesome. We're going to go back to the main screen. Full screen, I'm back. And we're going to dive into this oh. week's episode of Sunday Tea Book, Chapter 5, The Boil. It's like you had like six cups of coffee, that kind of speed. <laughs> uh, reminds me of that a dirty loop when they play music. I'm like in a rush, in a rush. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up if you know who Dirty Loops is. <laughs> I'm not expecting any thumbs up from that. But do, okay, I'm going to say that though. Okay. I didn't say that yet. Oh. If you like this, uh, this content, if you know that mm -hmm. you're going to love Sunday Tea Book because you've been here before and you always love Sunday Tea Book, go ahead and reach down there and whoop, smash that thumbs up button now. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you could do that if you want to, if you want to know when we go live, etc. And let me just, while I'm plugging stuff. And if you want to join the Discord, you know, maybe I'm going to start uh, a channel on Discord just for Ask Jin Li Wu questions and maybe you'll get preferential treatment if you're on our Discord. Mm. I didn't commit to anything, I said maybe. <laughs> you're hard to guess. Huh? Yeah, I'm just being coy. I'm being cheeky. Mm. I like that. Uh, I, that was so fast and now my brain is like... Zzz, 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 zzz. Okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Back to what we're going to talk about today. Uh, water. So two major parts today. First, we talk about water per se. Second, we talk about uh, boiling water. Um, I don't know if you guys, if you brew tea enough, ever, have you ever noticed your intimacy with the water? Like mm. for me, if, <laughs> let all, me explain. It okay? all starts with <laughs> the burned fingers. First, there's some pain and then there's yes. some reconciliation and then some love. But every now and then you, you think you might have a uh, superpower. Because for me, if I hear the water, uh, when I hear the water hits the leaf, I can tell if it's boiling water or not. Mm -hmm. The sound is different, right? So we're gonna talk about is that superpower or not. And sometimes you can tell, oh, the water is about to boil, or oh, the water is boiled mm -hmm. just by the sound. Mm -hmm. So. That's what we're going to talk about. It. But first, so we talk about water. Very basic thing about water is we know the hard and the soft of water, right? Uh, the what is the kind of a, what is about that a majority? The majority is about the calcium and the mm. magnesium, the ion, ion, a calcium ion and magnesium ion. I want to go back to your previous idea just for two uh -huh. seconds because I want to put a question out to the to the gang here, mm -hmm. because what you said, like when you talk about the water hitting the leaf. I still think that's pretty superpower. But when you talk about hearing the water boil, and I want here's what I want to ask you guys. I'm gonna guess. So let me know if you if you don't you if you can tell from your setup and your kettle, you I'm gonna bet a lot of you can hear when your water's boiled. And and nine times out of ten or better, you're right. And that and so right, you probably think, oh, that's not a superpower. And that's how I think about your superpower of the leaf. It's, it, it, why do you know? Your friends probably think that's a superpower, right? Because they're like, oh my God, you knew your kettle was boiled. It's like, yeah, I, built, I boiled that kettle one million times or whatever, and maybe not a million, but a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the water on the leaf, right? You've heard that so many times, mm -hmm. boiling and non-boiling, like when the mm -hmm. kettle gets cooler. So anyway, yeah. let me know if you are familiar enough with your setup that you can hear your water boil because I know that's not a big deal for me anymore. It used to be. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry about that. No, no, that's, uh, that's actually... I'm bumping the table point. a lot. I'll try not to do There's no earthquake here. Everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, so calcium ion, uh, Ca2+, plus, and the magnesium ion, uh, Mg2+. Plus. Mm. So in the form when it's in the water, you could have a... Uh, uh, here we go. Bicarbonate. HCO3 minus. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, she's even providing us the charge. No, in case it's uh, if my bi bicarbonate is not right, that I use the formula to search the the English term. Mm. So let me know if it matches. And okay, good so far. Uh, sulfate SO4 two minus, and 
feels like a classic. It will be short, I promise. And the uh, chloride, the Cl minus. So the uh, basically the mineral comes in this kind of form. Uh, the higher the mineral content, calcium and magnesium, the harder the water is. Otherwise, the softer the water is. However, if it's combined, uh, if it's with a bicarbonate, if it's bicarbonate, it's a temporary hard water because once you boil it, it will. Uh, It'll drop out. Drop out. Mm. While we see those layers and stuff in the. Oh, thing. somebody mentioned how they have a lime layer in their kettle. So right. when you boil it, boom, there's your yeah. bicarbonate lining so, your kettle. Exactly. So mm. it's uh, not as bad as a hard water because uh, it will become soft once you boil it. In terms of uh, you know having tea with it, mm -hmm. and uh, but if uh, it's a uh, sulfate uh, based, uh, it will be not removable by uh, boiling. You might need to use a filter or mm -hmm. some other method. And uh, usually we suggest to use uh, soft water. Uh, it is better than hard water because um, uh, the, the tea liquor will, like compare with the hard water, the mm. same tea, the liquor will look brighter. Uh, the taste will be more refreshing while the, um, uh, the hard water uh, brewed Tea will have a duller liquor color, uh, dimmer or to the darker side, and the taste tend to have a little bit more astringency, mm. like compared with the same tea, right. same brewing method kind of thing. And uh, of course, you also don't want a water that is overly alkaline. All water a little bit to the uh, acid side is uh, uh, more desired. Right. Yeah. Uh, how am I doing with my uh, chemistry? Was great. Chemistry I think. Let us so know. Far, uh, let us know that... if you caught anything out there. Yeah. I remember we brewed once in um, with super hard water from that rushing stream, which we talked about last mm. week, and uh, it really muted the oolong, huh? I need a cough. Sorry. Oh, oh. <coughs> cough break. Um, yeah. So it and it really like the um, it dulled it dulled everything. The liquor. Brilliance was dull, but also the flavors. And we're gonna say why it's not good to use rushing water. That's mm. pretty fun. But you're right. The taste is totally altered. Like uh, when we go travel, we bring the tea we're most familiar with, so we can try different uh, water and mm. uh, see that. So when it's oh, boy, quote unquote bad water, you can really see how the tea become foreign to us. Like mm -hmm. I never taste anything like that from that tea. Yeah, and it's it's shocking right. how it um, impacts the flavor. Uh, maybe it shouldn't be, but we get so used to brewing, to having our tea in our own setting here at home mm. with our routine of filtered water, water and boiled yeah. once and blah, blah, blah. And then when you go somewhere else and it's like, you check, sometimes I check the tea. Did I put the wrong tea in or was there something else in the, in the guy water? Or something? I know. It's we really... always try to think maybe the thermos wasn't clean enough. Yeah. Right. Initially, when yeah. we first encountered that phenomenon, we would always think it's the thermos. Yeah. So there's another thing that's iron in water that could be affecting your taste, like uh, the taste and the look of the tea. Uh, ferric, Fe3+, plus, ferric. You know, two plus not very stable. Then they often form in the three plus form. I have no idea about that. That's cool. You know that. No, I didn't know about the two plus. I thought it was two plus. That's the sort of the natural, like not stable, but natural but state. Quickly of becomes three plus. Oh. Okay. Anyways, so that will combine with the T polyphenol. So they have that uh, oxidation and the condensation reaction, and eventually you will have the T first. Uh, in the health benefit level, you are reduced, kind of. Mm. And uh, of the tea liquor, do you will notice it turns more to the black side, the like a dark color because of iron, right? And mm. the taste will also get uh, quite astringent. In general, you don't want too much like metals in the. The metal always right. give that astringent Stringent. touch in the. Um, what did I say? In the tea, and. That's just general to talk about when we choose a water, what's the basic thing about that. Then if we think about in Louis's time and in his book, what he has been talking mm. about, do they make sense? Or when he say mountain water or fast water or that, what does that mean? Right. Right. 
um, first, what he has been talking about are all natural waters. Mm. And uh, for people like me, okay, who have absolutely no knowledge about how to select water in the wild. Yeah, uh, and possibly so, you. But if you're yeah. an expert at that, let us know. Yeah. But if you are just like me, we don't suggest you just go out and boil the water and just because we don't have the basic knowledge of selection. But in his time, most people will have a very basic knowledge of uh, how to select the safe water. Mm -hmm. And then he go a next level to do the tasting. So uh, we don't suggest you just go out and try different water unless you are equipped with the knowledge to select safe water. Otherwise, you use the proper filter mm. and stuff. So uh, water, as we know, is a great natural, basically universal solvent. Yep. So all the natural water out there is not pure. They all have some kind of stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So in mountain water, what he usually talking about spring water, what is good is it's clean. It has uh, less suspended impurities in it and uh, which means it's high transparency. And uh, in terms of uh, it's um, uh, uh, slow and steady flow, it also have a relatively uh, uh, stable quality, right. which is uh, true, depends on where you are. Like uh, the Wakefield water we have, I found it's uh, quite different in terms of season, sometimes over the mineral, sometimes not. Right, right. So, Seasonal dependency, right? It yes. depends, which we found interesting. We cannot explain it, but we did notice yeah. it through taste. It's relative stable, but uh, it is not uh, like never change. Which makes sense in nature. Yeah. Nothing's yeah. overly stable in nature. Yeah, exactly. And uh, to be clear, it's not all mountain uh, spring is good because Lou, you said that uh, there yeah. are even you know sulfur spring waters and stuff. Mm. It's not even for drinking. So mm. um, so that's great for bathing though. <laughs> yes, just to clarify, uh, watch out for general uh, mountain springs. Mm. I'm gonna take a break and brew some tea. Yeah, I'm gonna ask. A, I'm gonna answer a few. See what people people are saying. There's lots of cool comments out here. So um, Joseph has an annoying click on his kettle, so he knows when it's about to boil. That's kind of ah. cool. Um, and Greg can hear the temperature, which is, I kind of dig that. I kind of get where you're coming from yeah. because with ours, you know, and it's interesting when you go to somebody else's kettle, the audio is different, right? I think because of the way the water echoes in the chamber, it, it throws me off. But at home, I can take a pretty good guess at how warm the water is and how close I am and when it starts to roar. Just before it roars, I can usually nail it. Mm. Um, Tobias comments that with Den Tong, um, needs really clean water. He likes really, uh, what did he say? Not too many minerals so it can really sing and th that taste can come out. Yeah, yeah. And, well, hi, R, did you say Joseph? What's RO water? Reverse osmosis. So he uses a, a, filter, a pretty fancy filtering technique to pull okay. that out and get oh. his water back to a good state for tea. Oh, like cool. you were saying, it's so full of iron. He's yeah. kind of a victim of that. So yeah, he's got yeah. that iron issue. Leaves the red ring on the tub and on the sinks yeah. and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Greg will get a new uh, filter. Yeah, what, Brita, what he uses it? Brita. We oh, use okay. Brita we too, use by the Brita way, too. Greg. We also change the filter often to make sure it doesn't get too uh, yeah. skunky. I found with the tab, Brita works like really it's fantastic. well. Uh, Not as good with the camp side. We, we even brought a Brita because mm. our camping filter wasn't good enough for tasting. So we brought a Brita with us to camp. Yeah. And it's not as good because I guess it's not heavy duty enough to I filter think, the campsite the wa water. Yeah, yeah, we were using potable campsite water, mm. which doesn't technically need to be filtered, but for all the reasons we're talking about right now, we decided to run it through a filter and it certainly helped, but it wasn't as, uh, you know, it wasn't at the standard of a city tap water, which is, you know, no criticism to the campsite. It was plenty, plenty okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Zhu Bajie says, uh, dreaming of the tiger spring by Hangzhou is pretty good water for spring water. Yes, Hu Pao Quan is a very famous uh, spring uh, water 
Spring water, yeah. Like uh, a Chinese spring water. The Chinese spring China. water, yeah. That spot often tested with the cheese and stuff. Uh, experts do contest with, you know, Fu Pao Quan water, that water, this water. Several, con many, many contests, and that water always wins. A consistent winner, right? Mm. It's a, a really famous and historically famous and still famous till today. Oh, he can hear the temp when pouring. Ah, okay, so okay. it's similar to me. You can Proly. really hear the difference, huh? Wow, yeah, I'm gonna pay more attention to that. I feel like I gotta catch up. Right. <laughs> so actually, in uh, Lu Yu's version, he also mentioned two things that's very interesting. He actually highlighted one is Shi uh, Zhong Ru, one is Man Liu. Shi Zhong Ru calcium carbonate. Is that carbonate? That the landscape that would still act as stalagmites, you mean? Calcium ah. carbonate? What was your... Calcium carbonate is the uh, what consists of Shizhong It's a landscape where water will drip down from it and form like the drippy white... Yeah, stalactites thing. and stalagmites. That? Yeah. What? Stalactites. Okay. No, no, story. Stalactites and stalagmites. You got to remember yeah. the letter G hangs down. So those are the hanging down ones. I think I got that right. <laughs> Keep me honest I'm here. not going to try that, but that what you said. Anyway, it consists of uh, calcium carbonate. So what happens mm. is, is basically water going through the ground uh, by pressures as I pick up the, uh, um, pick up the uh, calcium bicarbonate. Right, and when it leaks out, uh, the drastic change of temperature and pressure, boom, it separates, become calcium carbonate, carbonate, and leaves on the, the stone or whatever mm. it drips out of, and the little mini amount of a carbon dioxide leaves in the water. So the ultimate form is the freezy, the bubbling water, which we put the, the carbon di, di, di Dioxide, dioxide into it, like yeah. uh, bubbly water. Yeah, but mm. this is the minor form, natural form. But usually mm. with a small amount, small amount of CO2 in the water, <laughs> easier for me to pronounce, okay? CO2 mm -hmm. in the water, you usually give water this brisk, refreshing uh, mouthfeel. It's great for tea. Mm. Many, many of the famous uh, spring waters usually contains a certain different levels, but many levels of CO2 in them to make them taste good for tea. So when he talk about uh, that, the water drip from that mm. is great for tea. It actually stands, still stands the true in this kind of science explained world. I got it backwards. Huh? Stalactites come from the ceiling. Stalagmites are from the ground up. <sighs> okay, great. Oh. At least you help them understand what I'm trying to say. Otherwise, there's no chance. Mm. They might have figured it out. They're pretty clever. <laughs> so a little bit of CO2 in the water. Mm. A-OK, -okay, even good for tea. Yeah, it tastes yeah, good. It makes sense. It has that, I don't know. I don't. I want to say tart, but that's probably not the right. But you know, in a mini amount, it has that little like briskness. That little, it gives it a bit of sharpness. A yeah. So when you brew, liveliness. Yes. When you brew tea, tea is the aroma. You know, it's more high aroma, uh, a little bit more refreshing, cleaner taste, uh, cleaner taste, the cleaner aroma, not as draggy, kind of thing. If you do side by side, you will see a huge difference. And another thing that uh, Lu Yu commented that is good is slow flow, which is quite interesting, I found. Like uh, if I read, I just read through, oh, okay, this tastes good. Slow flow water would be good, but why is that? Mm. So just divide that into two elements. The key word is it flows. So you have consistent uh, refresh of the water. It's not mm. stale water. Second, slow is the key which means this water, mm, how should I say, the sediment in the water has time to settle down. Right. If it's too fast, the water pick up all the dirt, the soil, the impurities, mm -hmm. and uh, just everything is rough Constantly together. mixing. Yeah, it's actually mixing. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have the filtering 
the slow makes sure it actually has time to settle down. The so Interesting. the uh, clarity of the water will be really good. Mm. So uh, if we just put a little bit of thought of what he said and explain it, and it proves uh, it still makes sense even in nowadays. It's a uh, how should I say experience uh, this accumulation of truth. Yes. Accumulation of experience discover the truth. Then he talked about a uh, uh, big river, river water. So river water is a groundwater, uh, which means it won't have much of the mineral because it's a ground surface water. Surface water has less uh, hardness in it. On the other hand, because it's a surface water, it collects more dirt, dust, uh, you know, and all the like uh, plants, animal, all the waste stuff could get in that easily. And the, Usually, you have a higher uh, durability if it's uh, like a surface water compared to those uh, uh, spring water. Turbidity. Turbidity, higher okay. turbidity. I mean, it's cloudy, okay. more cloudy. Right. Because it's uh, the surface thing. And easily affected by uh, season or environment like pollution. So he suggested if you are drinking from uh, rivers or stuff, uh, get the water away from people a little bit away from say right. city or stuff which is yeah. still true don't collect it downstream from a big city yeah <laughs> he was pretty specific yeah. about that yeah then he also talked about uh, hey don't use a well reason being well is underground uh, water that usually has less uh, settlement because uh, less suspended settlement but it has more uh, mineral in it mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. harder and because well usually is more more uh, how should I, close to the surface, not as deep, so yeah. it's more sustainable, uh, susceptible to uh, environment elements too. If there's any uh, uh, pollution, right? For example, uh, you know, like we say, Chang'an, the city, Xi'an is the capital of uh, different dynasties and dynasties, but they're not the same location, those capitals are not the same place as today's the Xi'an city because ancient times how people put the wastewater <clears throat> their old cities are polluted after a couple of hundreds of years use their wells were just yellow water and stuff yeah. so they had to move the whole city somewhere else so the Han dynasty Chang'an vis-a-vis -vis Tang dynasty Chang'an they're actually different location all in that range but because of this wow. uh, 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 surface underground water pollution they had to move wow. yeah, just to say like in terms of a well water you with modern management a lot of things are banned but old times people they didn't did know all, right yeah wow I'm just thinking of the administrator who picked up that project well wells aren't good we got to move the city got to go 100 miles that way or 10 miles that way or whatever it was holy cow right Usually, before you have to make a decision, the city is abandoned by the people already, right? Either mm. you have disease or stuff like right, that. Right, right. They just don't want that water. Mm. What? Ganges River. I think when we talk about uh, don't drink from the Yellow River then. <laughs> yeah. Ganges River, yeah. Tur talking about turbid big rivers, right? It's a right. little bit of a different time now, right? Big rivers are largely kind of feared by modern people because we mm. can pollute on a scale never before imagined by Lu Yu. <laughs> right? It is, it is. So, no, so I did a whole time to the city. Okay, and don't drink from the Yellow River then. Yeah, you, did. you really have to go through a big process. Mm. Even old times, Huanghe is always like raging and really right. Yeah, too fast, right? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Last but not the least, <laughs> there's should, no bridge. I'm just yeah, jumping yeah. We right should away. Mention too that uh, you know we don't recommend you go out and apply Lu Yu's techniques to collect uh, natural water unless, of course, you're some kind of an expert in it. I think you said it pretty clear before, mm. right? It's not a skill that we generally possess like we've mm. done it because mm -hmm. we've gone camping we use a camping filter it mm. works it makes sure that we don't die it does not make sure our tea is amazing mm. so we did not try the brita 
with potable water, which is totally fine. Right. Helped a bit, but yeah. Right. So be careful out there. Uh, don't drink from the Ganges. Don't drink from the Huanghe, uh, from the Yellow River. Right. Zhubaji says uh, carbonated ions in the water mm. from the carbonic acid formed from CO2 and water makes the taste tart because it's acidic. Most mm. acids are sour. Think citrus acid. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, yeah, it's a great comment. Thanks yeah, for sharing yeah, that. Yeah. that. That does kind of explain the whole carbon dioxide uh, liveliness of water concept, mm, right? It's mm. just a little bit of acid, give that a little, yeah, little yeah. sharpness. Yeah, it's just uh, the amount, right? Mini mm -hmm. amount is mm -hmm. uh, enhanced. Nothing too much. It's, it's the same when we talk about, uh, like if you brew tea with a pure distilled water vis-a-vis -a, -vis a little bit of a mineral, it actually the taste is a fun, Fun experience. It's not about good and bad and mm -hmm. don't use this. It's within the range. Mm -hmm. You know, the combination could provoke some interesting thing. So last natural water, which is I I feel like it's less popular here in the West. I don't hear people talk about that a lot. And also because of the time we're in, right? Rain and snow. It's very popular in China, mm. especially in ancient China. So first, rain and snow water. It's not just a you know, a fantasy novel uh, drinking thing. Even in my hometown, we actually uh, collect uh, rainwater. We call that uh, heavenly sky water. It's a good water, uh, Tian Shui. So we love to use that for tea, for cooking. It's the, we consider that the best water, but that's all times, <laughs> right? Nowadays, we have all kinds of pollution. Uh, I haven't seen anybody do that at all. So even the farmers and stuff like in the in the countryside? I don't know much about the farmers in China. My region, even though we have next trip we'll let you farm. know. Yeah. No, they they maybe use that to water. I don't know. Old times like here is my when I was a kid, okay? Uh when I go to my grandparents' home they have a huge uh urn. Urn like, or like how a big and you can you can fit like uh, three four adults in it. Oh wow! Not standing, okay? Maybe squatting, but it's really big, and uh, that is a glazed earthen well. So it's a kind of a porous, kind of a porous, but not not fully sealed. What I'm saying, it right. kind of a breeze, and the lid is a wooden bigger lid, so you prevent any other things to from falling in. But we age it. We love to age that. So the older the water, the more precious it is. So we also, whenever we brew tea, my grandparents will get those water. Don't use tap water. Wow. Get those water and brew. But later on, you know, the acid rain and all those concerns. So nobody um, do that anymore. But that's my experience. And people always talk about age. We even give to people with 30 years old the aged rain water or snow water. Wow. Uh, just to say, in Louis' time, this is not, we're not considering all oh, that kind of modern industrial pollution. So rain and snow are actually very, very good. Mm -hmm. Even though in the falling process, they might get some germs and stuff, but the overall quantity is very limited. And uh, in the snow, they actually have less of the heavy water, D2O, the deuterium, deuterium, Deuterium. Deuterium. Mm. Deuterium oxide. Heavy okay. water. D2. Oh, have less of that in this natural form of uh, uh, water. So if you feed snow water to uh, all the chickens, the goose, duck, uh, or use that to water the uh, farms, it actually grows better. Everything grows better because uh, DO2 was uh, proven to kind of suppress the growth. Uh, mm. So that's why it's highly uh, recommended and stuff. And of course, the ancient Chinese people also love dew. <laughs> so the rich family would have their servant collecting dew of leaves and use those to brew water. Wow. Tons of ways, tons of uh, stuff to do water. Um, but for today's people, we still, we encourage you to experiment in the, how should I say, 
in a safe, safe way. way in a safe way with different waters you yeah know? even myself i'm concerned sometimes because when i when my mom comes to canada she's freaking out with the winter you know the snow mm. and she's like you gotta clock everything but everybody like in ottawa was like oh we have acid rain and stuff but then i feel like i'm not sure if we should collect that snow mm. when it melts so i don't Speaking of snow water, uh, Greg has a question about glacier water, which is interesting. So I, first, I guess that's a, the modern way to experiment with water is you can mm -hmm. go and buy a bunch of different waters that are collected yeah. from various springs, glaciers, this and that. And whether or not you believe, you believe their source is a different question, but it's something you could do. Um, and... Oh, I wanted to say for people about the, the heavy water thing threw me, right? So the deuterium in the water, which is an isotope of hydrogen. <clears throat> right. So that freaked me out a bit because I only learned about that through what I learned about nuclear chemistry, which is, you know, it's a byproduct of fission, um, <laughs> you know, and it's, it's, and they generate, you know, almost, I don't know if it's almost pure, but, you know, hard water to the point that the water is poison. Um, we're not talking about that here. This is trace amounts of hard water in your regular water, it's which mini, mini, mini. which happens and which in, is normal in natural water. Yeah, in natural water. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that that happened, but it does. And uh, you know, it's not going to kill you. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. Um, but it's not desired in tea water, I guess. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you want your <laughs> tea leaves to grow a third eye or something like that. And Bodik uses water from different parts of the Ukraine and sometimes from the mm. EU, but still it's in plastic. Yeah, I wonder about that, mm. how much that would play in. It's not supposed to affect the flavor. Of course, how long it's in the plastic probably also matters. But I think by and large, if it's freshish, you know, like not years old, I think probably the plastic is a minor player. It's supposed to be inert, um, you know, but water is, what did you say at the beginning? It's the universal solvent right so yeah have a lot of metals a lot of it's metals good. in the snow so it can turn into rust, rust. Mm. Mm. yeah that heavy iron mm. content again i guess mm. yeah it's a it's a slightly how should i say sometimes i feel like it's a little bit sad and fortunate Said is because now we have those chemistry knowledge and uh, so observant of what's happening around us that whenever you know any water I see, I don't feel like they're safe to drink unless right. it goes through some process. It mm. kind of a uh, uh, fortunate so we can protect ourselves. Unfortunate is a lot of fun are gone. You know, old times. Uh, Actually, I feel like melting snow and trying those and trying different natural water would be really fun. But mm. now we have so much concern, feel like it's full of risk and stuff. So, yeah, and it's hard to get a bead on what is the actual risk, you know, how minor or major is the risk. Probably not that big in general, but am I an expert? No, and nowadays yeah. you got to be an expert and blah blah blah. But anyway, maybe we'll do something crazy and do it live, and hopefully we won't <laughs> we won't kick the bucket on camera or something from the from the water. <laughs> Most dedicated okay. YouTuber. <laughs> right. Okay, move on to talk about uh, boiling water then. Uh, very famous term that got a very a lot of people if you read a little bit about chinese you will know boiling water about you know fish eye how much is boiled and a pearl like uh stream of pearls or uh waves mm. like uh, those description is so vivid that people still use that nowadays mm. before we dive into that what does this whole mean what does this imply or strongly telling you is that a water boiler doesn't have a lid <laughs> i think it's very important because like uh, nowadays most of the cattle we use right i wouldn't know the, i wouldn't be able to observe anything right right so opaque, if yeah. louis you could write so specific about the shape the look of that uh, and just to make that clear that glass is extremely ex expensive at that time and not mm. so clear so he's not using anything glass and probably not even 
um, heat rated, like uh, what do we call oh, that? Possible. Um, I don't know if they had figured that out at that Those time. are so, yeah, extreme so uh, uh, luxury goods at that time and yeah, there, it's yeah. not for boil. So there's no lid in the pot, whatever he used. Right. So he could use that and uh, he could observe uh, how the water changed. So he uses the eye to describe the temperature. Mm. But later on, like in Song Dynasty, the way of boiling water has changed and uh, the way of using eyes to know the temperature transformed to hearing. So while, you know, Lu Yu described water in, when it's boiling in three Fish visual eyes, phase. Fish frog eyes, and ocean waves. Yeah, later on people will try to describe that in sound, mm. in the hearing ways. You know, they have a three major phase, 15 small little phases. It's describing the... Wow. <laughs> one day when I get into that, you never know. <laughs> Anyway, that's in sound. So uh, key, infor key information or something we might not think about is the vessel plays a key role that he was able to mm. observe that. See. And if you are like, oh, never know what that, it's okay because we don't, most of us maybe don't use glass to mm. boil and we probably all have a lid. So what happened? Basically just uh, go to a little bit of a phys physics, yeah, not even physics, talk about the water boiling process, right? When you first boil, uh, the little steam, the little gas, air in the water becomes a little pearl, sorry, fish eye on the oh. bottom of the vessel. It also are those uh, uh, gas or air from the vessel per se, it's all bundled together. Then they ri rise up. The water, uh, the water temperature on the surface is actually cooler. So mm. it actually pushed the bubble smaller. And right. so what you were seeing is a little bubble fish eye on the, maybe the surf, the bottom of the container, the, the uh, pot or the side of the pot don't really react too much to the um, surface of the water, right? right? Then the temperature keep uh, raising, which means more steam in the bubble, the air and more air from the water gets in the bubble. So the bubble is bigger, but still get pressed. So in this kind of phase, you will still see the big bubble from the bottom, smaller on the top. Oh, wow. And when that happens, there's a resonation with the kettle itself. So mm. you realize when you're getting close to boil, it's the loudest. It's yes. when the vibration of the bubbles with the vibration of the vessel, they become resonate. That's the loudest point. But when it fully boils, uh, yes, because exactly because I even draw the bubble size on my notebook, you know, small, 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 big. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna make a little picture on that, right? When you reach the maximum, uh, so the mm. actual floating force is really big, and the bubble actually the pressure doesn't have as much pressure on the the and the water temperature is more even, it's more all very right. hot. So the bubble from the bottom become even bigger on the surface and boom, and that's when you have the steam going crazy too. And mm -hmm. at that time, there's no resonation between the kettle and stuff. So when the water is fully boiled, it actually, you will notice your kettle is much quieter. Yeah, it's just that producing. low rumble. Yes. And why we care about the water boiling is because we want to prevent, in Chinese we call it or lao. Nen means tender, means underboil. In this case, lao oh, means nung. old. Yeah. Soft tofu. Yes, tender oh, tofu. Bye bye nung nung. Bye bye nung nung, yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's a coconut description. Yeah. Lao means old, means over, too much boil. You don't want to underboil because when the temperature is, when it's not boiled, uh, the temperature is not high enough. When you brew the tea, you cannot get enough substance, the mm. content from the tea out. So it will affect the aroma of the tea and the taste of the tea. But on the other hand, if you keep boiling the water, boil too much, right? It will eliminate all the, uh, the air, the gas in the bubble, uh, sorry, in the tea and become a bubble and escape. That would make your, how should I say, that would make your tea dull. Remember we just talked about having a mini bit of CO2 in the water, mm. it gives that a brisk refreshing. This one is really because the long boiling process, like I described before, gets all the air, possible air uh, out of the water. So the water will be really dull. 
And right. uh, when you brew that, uh, it, uh, if you do side by side, you can actually tell the difference of a long boiled uh, water, mm -hmm. the effect. And on the other hand, on the chemical side, a lot of water has nitrite. Nitrite? Nitrite. N-O-2. Nitrite. Nitrite. Oh, okay. Nitrite. So with the boiling, the water volume goes down, what means it concentrates. Mm. And a lot of water have NO3 minus, which is nitrate. It's not so stable. With a long time uh, heating and stuff, it can also transform into NO2 minus nitrite. So which we don't want is a poison kind of poison kind of thing. Just right. not good. So uh, one point uh, at one side is concentrating uh, on the other side and make uh, unstable things becoming it, which nitrite, not good. So we don't want to overboil. So don't hammer your water too long. <laughs> I'm so nervous whenever there is this. I get in super <laughs> big trouble if I don't notice when the kettle boil and I let that go forever. And now we know it's legit. I better get on the ball and don't let that I happen. I told you again. this before, but you were like, oh. I know. Yeah. It's just a thing, right? You always have to uh, don't believe your wife the first time. It takes like eight or 10 times before you believe. Right, guys? Am I right? I'm not saying it's the correct way to behave. It's just a bad habit. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so Greg seems to be super jazzed about the, uh, the overboil water. He's also noticed that. So yes. If you tasted it already and wow. had, a, had a hunch that something was going on, 10 points for you. You got it. Um, that is something that is going on. Yeah. And if you haven't tried it, well, maybe try really it Well, that's really great. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I notice like uh, there's two ways I find I can notice something well. One is I have a long time experience that. Mm. Second is side by side. Mm. If you ever feel like oh, I never notice overboil Killer. or stuff, you do side by side and yeah. that's for me is the Do a regular part. boil, do an overboil, mm. try them. So in general, if you're just getting into tea and you're not sure what all the fuss is about and how people can be so mm. good with taste this and taste that and blah, 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 do some side, do yourself a favor and you don't have to have a super fancy setup, everything to be, you can do side by side. You can do one after the other sort of quickly before your memory fades. Mm. Nothing will advance your understanding like that. Mm -hmm. uh, just to, to really taste it and, uh, and, uh, and you know, maybe watch a couple of our tasting videos on how to taste mm. so that you know how to breathe and blah, blah, blah. It's not, it's not super complicated, mm -hmm. but it will, that's, those two things for me made the biggest difference. How to taste in terms of actual mm. physical technique and then side by side. So yeah. with water, that's cool. I really uh, uh, spend like a one and a half episode dedicated to water. Besides, it's so important for tea brewing. I also feel like that's a good example of uh, demonstrate that a class of tea is out of date, but it's not fully out of date mm. for all the information. And some, uh, that's one side. And on the other hand, I mean, I don't know. I notice a lot of times when people talk about Chinese tea and stuff, people love to mystify it, to mm. make that yeah. as it sounds as so profound and you as you cannot understand because blah blah. Like uh, if we just say, "Oh, Louis said this water is better. This water is better. That water is better," then we were like, "Ah." Oh, Almost like well. it's doctrine. Yeah, dogma, right? Yeah. But it's actually but for a reason. If we just do a little bit of analysis mm. and we can see, ah, this makes sense. Oh, this is a, this part of the meaning information. It might not apply to us. To analyze that, you realize all those uh, uh, amazing or unbelievable things about Chinese tea can be analyzed mm. and explained. Uh, I often use the people who says uh, Chinese tea producers can taste the tea and know if the tea is plucked on rainy days or produced on rainy days. Yes, and it's yeah, not mystified wrong. because there is a reason to it. Mm. What's the difference? And I'd like to explain that to that to people so that I don't know. Yeah, it's I just not, like to it's, explain those no, things. Don't voodoo. make that just sound like yeah, it's exactly. not voodoo, it's, it's not black magic, it's, it's not, not wizardry, a, yeah. it's not something that you cannot attain because you're not from the right village or something like that. It is just experience uh, with tea, knowledge applied. It's learnable. 
it's uh, With a, yeah. curiosity applied. Yeah. Um, Jubaji asks a good question. Can you add air to the water with a long pour? You know, some people do that. Where's my arm? Mm. The long pour. That's actually a very, mm. very, very good uh, question. Uh, I, I don't have an answer. My question is, I, uh, my answer is, I don't know. Because I have a, a few questions. First is how long would that be sufficient to literally add mm. a noticeable amount of water, mm. right? We talk about the raindrops and it adds those kind of things. So that's a lot of meters. How, mm. how far can mm. I actually pour the water? Yeah. Second, whenever we long pour, meaning we pour that from high and stuff, I'm sacrificing a lot of heat. Mm. I personally found that that effect on tea is much more noticeable than the uh, little air, air quantity that might add. So my answer is I don't know, but I have a few like things I would want to ask before. You know, yeah, I have a great one. Wow. Uh, I shouldn't laugh at the spam, but this is the first time we've experienced spam on the channel. So, uh, you know. <laughs> Shouldn't encourage that by laughing, but it was a little funny and surprised me. But anyway, Jubajia, great question. Mm. Um, Greg thinks that maybe black and uh, home child like a little bit harder water. Um, I'm poor, I should say. Mm, it's not can a, manage it mm, for sure. At a certain, like can manage that better. I found a green tea really, green tea, white tea really take a toll. If Suffer. The, mm. Yeah, if the yeah. water is really hard. Yeah. We noticed that we were talking about one of the wells around here that we noticed some differences over the season. But we noticed for our oolongs, our white tea, our green tea, we don't really like to use that well water. Better just mm. use our home technique, which is Brita and boil. Mm. Um, but with the puar, oh boy, is that ever thick. Yeah. Mm, really yummy with that little bit harder yeah. water. A little bit though, keyword a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it all depends. This particular water is pretty good in terms of its hardness level. It's not brutally hard. Mm. Um, so, yeah. All right, guys, that wraps up this episode. I want to take a minute and promote the... Uh, I'll promote just to tell you again about the discord and our new series with Ask Chien Ling Wu. So if you have questions for her, check out that video. I'm going to put the link in this very video and you can jump on our discord and maybe there's going to be a channel, especially for the Ask Chien Ling Wu questions. Who knows? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what else? Uh, so thank you all for this was super awesome. The questions, the engagement. Mm. Really interesting, really awesome. Greg, Jubajia, Bodique, all of you, uh, Joseph, everybody. Uh, I missed a bunch of you, I'm sorry. Uh, I just scrolled off the screen so I can't see all of your names anymore, but yeah. thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you for the if you're comments. watching after the broadcast, thank you for watching after. You can still leave comments. We will still get back to you. Um, you can still even join the Discord. You won't be disqualified even though you're late. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Um, I mentioned Cha Ren in the intro reel. Cha Ren's a great resource for all kinds of cool um, tea knowledge. Um, next week's tea is going to be awesome. So tune in so you'll find out what it is. <laughs> I know what that means. You know what well, that I means, right? Well, I have no right to laugh at you because I also don't remember. <laughs> All right, guys. So um, All right, that was thank you so for joining. Fun. I see thank all you, the everyone. waves. Until next time, guys. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.